Right, morning everyone. Um, thought I'd come out this morning and do a bit of a video. Not had much chance to do any filming lately, so uh, a bit out of, out of touch with things. But I thought I'd do a video on my hunting setup. Not just my setup, but how I go about being accurate. My shooting style, if you like. So I'm going to go through things like my grip, my pouch hold, ball size, my elbow position, pouch rotation, which is one thing I've not seen covered before, I don't think. Um, my body, hand, eye coordination, how I place myself for a shot. Lots of different things, um, but mainly how to shoot a heavier setup or, or how I shoot my heavy setup. Um, it's controversial whether you know you should shoot a light setup, heavy setup. I mean, I don't personally see my setup as a heavy setup. Um, there are heavier ones, people are out there shooting 14 mil, 16 mil LEDs. Um, but I would say that my setup's on the higher end of an accurate setup. I'm not saying you can't be accurate with, uh, with heavier ones, but for me, I would see myself as kind of in the middle. Um, kind of a, a setup that would probably suit most people. So we're going to try and cover a lot of things um, and hopefully you know, a bit more of an insight into how and why I choose what I choose. Okay, so what is my hunting setup? Well, I use the Goblet Evo, which was designed by myself. Um, this is the new clip version that's going to be available soon. Um, hopefully within the next sort of two months, I would have thought so. Hopefully by November, these should be available on sale. So I use the Goblet Evo. Um, which I've been shooting now for probably a year. Not the clip version, but the, the design itself. At the moment, I'm shooting a 0.85 band um, and a two millimeter superfiber pouch. I prefer the thick pouches because with the thinner pouches, you can really feel the pressure. The, the ball's really uncomfortable in the hand, especially with a heavier draw. Um, you can really feel like you, you're crushing your fingers, if you like. Um, so, like I said, two millimeter superfiber pouch has been a revelation, really. A real thick padded pouch with a heavier draw you don't really have to worry about light pouch, increased speed, that sort of thing, because the band takes care of all of that. The, the, the heavier pouch is far worth more than, than a lighter pouch and trying to gain a few extra feet per second, if, if that. So that's, that's my setup this end. Ammo-wise, I'll use 10 millimeter lead or 11 millimeter steel. So like I say, not a massively heavy setup, but this generates good speeds, good power. Puts out around about between 230 and 240 feet per second with an 11 millimeter steel which equates to around 11 to 11 and a half foot pounds so we're within legal limits and more than safe more than capable to hunt with to ranges of 35 40 yards right so the first thing i want to cover is the grip on the frame all my frames are designed to be held in a brace grip so that's the thumb and forefinger across the width of the frame to give you a nice solid hold um, another grip which is good for uh, a heavier setup would be a, a pinch grip because obviously again you know it gives you a solid hold on the frame what I'm looking for when I shoot is a straight wrist so a pinch grip will naturally give you a straight wrist and so will a brace grip if you push your wrist forward so what I don't think is good on a heavier setup is if your wrist is cocked back like this hopefully you can see what I mean your wrist is cocked back so that the frame is sitting flat to my body which I don't think is a good way to shoot your bands will slap into the face of the frame you won't get a clear pass over unless you're twisting the pouch to try and get it to pass over plus you, your wrist is, is in, in a strong position to get your wrist in a strong position for a heavy draw you really need or well not need but you should be shooting with a straight wrist so that all that pressure is coming back through a straight line <clears throat> that will stop obviously a lot of the the shaking and wobbling so a brace grip with a straight wrist it, it puts you in a strong position for a heavy draw or heavier draw Right, next thing I want to cover is pouch hold. Now, pouch hold with lighter setups, you'll always hear everywhere people saying, grip the ball, grip the ball, grip the ball, which is right. But I think with a heavier setup, uh, you need to be gripping in front of the ball. Now, this can cause problems with ball, bumping the ball, but we'll cover that in a minute with elbow position. Um, when I put my pouch, when I, when I shot a lighter setup, I always grip the ball. Since moving to a heavier setup, I found it's far better to grip in front of the ball. So I'm not, I'm not gripping the pouch, just the pouch. What I'm, what I'm doing is I'm gripping the ball, but I'm gripping the ball behind my thumb and forefinger. Hopefully you can see that there. So what I'll do is obviously grip that up. When I draw, I'm allowing the ball to come back and sit against the back of my thumb and forefinger so I can feel the pressure of the ball. I'm not holding the pouch, or I am holding the pouch, but that's not where my sole pressure is. My sole pressure is feeling the pressure of the ball there's a squirrel going through the tree now. Against my thumb and forefinger. So the ball is kind of up against a barrier 
which is made by my thumb and forefinger so it can't slip. If it can't slip or it doesn't feel like it's going to slip, you're less likely, or you shouldn't be, doing this with your elbow because you don't feel like the ball's going to slip. So I can hold that all day long, I can draw that, no problem at all. Because the ball is sat up behind my thumb and forefinger, it's got a barrier, so I can feel it there. As long as I keep my elbow straight and I can feel the ball, I can feel the balance of the power, I can release it straight. Right, now this is where it gets a little bit complex. Um, for me, I shoot with my frame slightly cocked. Pounce rotation is one of the biggest things in, I think, in wavering accuracy. Sometimes your ball will strike left, sometimes it will strike right. Um, now, it may only be a small amount, but I think a lot of this comes down to this. Obviously, we've all got our anchor points, um, reference points. But when you draw into your anchor, if you draw to you, you can draw to your anchor and say your anchor's here. Now, if you're drawn to here and your, your hand is at this position and your ball flies straight, brilliant. Next time you draw to here, your thumb's still here, but your hand might be like that. So what you've done is you've added a degree of rotation. That's going to put an, an amount of spin on the ball and send your ball one way or the other, depending on which way you've twisted your hand. So pouch rotation and its reference to the line of the bands is very important. It's kind of like a rifle. Um, when you get a rifle, you set the rifle up and it's, it's set dead straight. You know, you've zeroed it. With a catapult, you have to zero it every single time because each time you're having to line up the front and back to get the straight line. Now, I'm not saying you can't shoot with a twist in your pouch. I've said this before, you can. If that's what you do every time and it's working, it's great. But for me, I like to shoot with a, with a dead straight flat band so it's straight through. There's no twist in it like this or like this. So to get this straight, every time I have a two point or two part anchor. So to get my rotation correct, or to get my anchor correct, I'll anchor to the side of my nose. Now see this finger here? To get my rotation correct, I'll twist my hand in and touch the corner of my mouth. So I'm locating there, the side of my nose, and my finger is locating in the side of my mouth. So I know if my finger isn't touching, I'm not at the correct rotation. So I bring my finger in to just touch there. So I've now got my height set, and my rotation set, and my draw set. So there I've got like a two-part a two part anchor. So it's like two, two checkpoints, if you like. So that, that sorts out, obviously, like I say, my anchor and my rotation. All I then have to do is then match the rotation with my catapult so I can see dead straight, just see one flat line down the band, and I know my bands are dead straight. Right, so now we know how I shoot, which I shoot with a two-part anchor. I also shoot very stood upright, which makes me have to shoot with a slightly cocked frame. Um, some people you'll see shoot with their head right over like this and the frame dead straight. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, the problem I find with that is when shooting upwards, it limits your draw. So we shoot like this, dead straight. I'm going to shoot upwards. My hand, you know, I've still got a good draw there, but it's not as good as it could be. I'll let it stand up dead straight. So I'm drawing across the length of my body. The longer the draw you get, obviously, the more power you can put into your shot. Yeah, your bands have to be a bit longer, obviously, but that's great. You want the longest draw as possible. If you're using a short draw technique, you know, you definitely want the longest draw as possible. So I like to stand up straight. And what we need to do, what we're looking to do is get the band to pass directly under our eye. That's why we see people do this, because they're getting the band underneath their eye. Whereas I'll shoot the slightly cock frame to bring the band underneath my eye try and show you hopefully you can see it so because if I wanted to shoot flat I could I'd just do this but that hinders me because when I shoot upright like I've just explained I don't get a full draw with my shoulder blades so by shooting upright I can draw further and also if I want to shoot upwards I've got a much longer draw so that I've got more power shooting straight up. I think this is where a lot of people struggle, is where they shoot dead straight, they go to shoot upwards, they either get stuck with their body position, because their spine obviously only go to a certain place because your hips stop. Or, whereas if you turn around and shoot slightly leant back with your shoulder blades pulled together, you can, like I say, you can get a much better draw and you can get a much better natural body movement. It doesn't matter if your frame's like this, if your bands are matching it and it's still running underneath the center of your eye, your ball will still fry straight. So at all times, as with any catapult shooting, if you want to be accurate, you need to keep everything solid. 
So we're not looking to, to draw and flick. Um, with hunting, with catapult hunting, you need to be stealthy, obviously, because you need to get relatively close to your quarry. So there's no point in, in getting up and drawing and releasing straight away. You always need to put yourself in a position where the quarry hasn't seen you. Sometimes you're going to take a snapshot, of course, but you want to be in a position where the quarry hasn't seen you, so you can take your time, you know, get yourself set up, look at your distance, think about your shot, think about what you're doing, think about your handhold, think about where you're coming to, think, think about everything. It's so easy to get absorbed in, oh my God, there's something. But you need to be thinking about everything back here for it to be successful down there. So think about your elbow position, think about your anchor point, think about your frame hole, and make sure when you release that pouch, you release it cleanly and you hold your frame dead steady. If you flick off slightly, pull off slightly, pull up slightly, you're going to affect the trajectory of the ball and you're most likely going to miss your target. So keep everything dead steady, dead solid, rock steady, still, boom, release. Right, so just fire off a couple of shots to show you uh, what I mean. So I'm upright, shoulders back. Everything's done, not slow motion, but in a, in a steady manner. It's all done controlled. Control is probably the best word. This would be the kind of tempo, if I was out hunting and I had a, I had a shot to take, this would be the kind of tempo I'd take it, because I want to make sure of everything. Just do one more. That's it. Right now, a few common mistakes that you're probably going to come across when you're trying to go across to a, a heavier setup is the first one will be your pouch, or not your pouch, sorry, your fork tip, turn them back. Because obviously you're using a heavier draw, the frame does want to come back on itself. And if you haven't, if you're not holding a dead straight wrist, good tight grip on the frame, the tip of the, the front tip, top tip, can come back like this. That'll cause obviously your, your pouch either to smack into the the frit the frame or your, your shots to be going high left high right sorry depending on which way which hand you're holding in so if your shots are going high right assuming a left hand hold it's most likely you haven't got your top tip turned over enough um, another thing ball can be uh, another thing cause the balls to strike high is your elbow position can be slightly off so you, you know literally just uh, bumping the ball slightly not bad enough to get a fork hit but bad enough to take the power out of the band because it, it's losing power it's not it's not coming out of the straight flat trajectory and leaving the pouch and passing over the catapult cleanly. So again, with a dead straight, nice upright position, dead straight elbow, leaning slightly, well say leaning slightly backwards, standing up straight, which again gives us the, uh, the movement in our shoulders, our scapula, to be able to open our chest right out, which gives us that real big long draw that we want to be using with a short draw. We really need to, be, with a short draw, we really need to be maximizing our draw length. So we're there. Um, that's about it really, I think. I mean, it's been a bit of a, a quick summary. Um, yeah, like I say, the things to, to watch out for is top frame, top tip of the frame turning over. Um, yeah, bumping, bumping the ball with the elbow. And the main thing is, I guess, is being solid in yourself. Make sure everything is rock, rock solid. Lock down, um, don't, Try not to shoot with your frame at 90 degrees. If you can, really do shoot with your frame pushed forward. It really does aid in taking that pressure off this wrist, stop the shaking, stop, stop the frame being pulled back. You'll need to add some length to your, uh, to your draw, obviously, to your, to your active, um, which isn't a problem. It's all gonna be a bit of a feeling out process. But there's so many of you now trying to switch over or switching over to a heavier hunting setup. Um, I thought this would hopefully help you all a little bit. So let me know how you get on. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, it's not a massively long one, but it's a bit of an insight into some of the things I look for when I shoot a heavy hunting setup. Cheers.